Hi everyone. Hi guys. Well, we're back. We're not in our loft. No. We're out in the courtyard. But we came out here specifically because we wanted to show you a piece of, of the Roman wall that's behind us here, which we deliberately planned and did not accidentally mess up because there's a rehearsal in the church. <laughs> no. Um, no, I'm kidding. But no, but at least we, we got wine. We've got wine. We've got a bottle of some nice Tuscan red. Yeah. Um, and we've got some lovely perfumes. This is a slightly different video, and it's a very different. It's a it's a bit special. We've got ten it's samples twofold. here. Twofold. It's a two-parter. Um, and the first the first fold, the first part, is actually smelling a couple of vintage things that we've both worn Which in the past and loved. Us. Very special so things. Let's. Yeah. I think we need to backtrack a bit. So we um, the reason we are doing this video is thanks to. Greggy boy. Yeah, we love you, Greggy. Uh, Greg Hartwell, who's someone we, when we were first getting into fragrances, he was one of the first channels I started watching. Yeah, and absolutely, same here. I was, yeah, I just watched his videos quite obsessively for what was seemingly a, a you know, everyday guy with such um, passion and knowledge yeah. about fragrances. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and the, 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 the fact that he had cheap uh, designer, very, very, very high-end luxury fragrances, and also some unknown cheapies as well. He was, he, yeah. I mean, he is, he is really, really great uh, for discovering these unknown. He's cheapies. just found some gems. Um, Oud Kadim, I discovered yeah. that through him. One of my favourite things to wear now. Yeah, you know, amazing, absolute legend. Uh, and so he's, he's a, um, a a vlogger, a YouTuber who you know we we really who got us into to vlogging yeah. and YouTubing. Uh, and so we are really excited that he kind of reached out and got in mm. contact with us. Um, the first two fragrances he has supplied us with, we're really excited. Very kind. Two of them. So firstly, let's talk about, we've, we've mentioned Kuros uh, a few times. You it's been in a couple on, of these, on, on your spring. Um, it was in, yeah, it was in our spring list. Spring our, list. My favourite fougeres is one exactly. of my favourite Exactly, it's, it's come up a few times, and we've often said, "Oh, it'd be great to smell the real, the real vintage, vintage stuff. stuff." And so here, which I guess I would have been wearing in 1997, 98. But here in this little bottle, so wow, is the real vintage stuff. So how old is this? Exactly, it's 1980s. This is from the 80s, and I can't remember the year, but I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling that he'd said 1983-ish, <laughs> but we'll, 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 we can put that down below, can't we, Dan, with his okay. magic. So if it's... This is old, this is old, proper vintage Kuros. Let's just pause, and I'll edit this, and you can check. So we've just checked, and it is 1984. So this... I was five. This, this... No, that's, that's something different. This, this little sample of uh, Kuros is one year younger than I am. That's amazing. How, how exciting. Um, so we're really, really excited about smelling that. The other one is a, a fragrance I think I'm actually more excited about. This is a fragrance uh, yeah. which, which I wore um, throughout my three years at uh, university. First I had a, a, a splash bottle, then I had the Eau de Toilette. Uh, yeah. Atomizer uh, bottle, um, and then I, I wore it all the time. It's the only fragrance I wore at university, and I haven't, I haven't worn it since. And it's now being discontinued. Um, it is Gucci Envy, wow. and it's funny because I, I haven't smelt it since then. Uh, so this, that's the first part of the video. The second part of the video is blind smelling. Great. Yeah, very exciting. Now uh, has kind of moved on, progressed, so he's still doing uh, videos, but he now also runs a sampling uh, website, Fragrance Samples UK. Yeah, which is com, great. Um, which is, we've said lots and lots of times about you know, how important it is to try samples before yeah. you go and spend loads of big bucks uh, on, on bottles. Um, and so he has sent us 10 samples to blind smell. But before that, let's do the first bit. Now I really We're gonna smell these two, okay. I, I really want to, I really want to start with the Gucci envy yeah. because as I said it's been I And I would get some skin ready. I would really get some skin ready for this. Okay. So I, I graduated from Your U skin will university glow. in about two thousand and five. And weird it's not that I like I graduated and thought, right, I, I, I can no longer wear this fragrance, but it just seemed to be that It just it faded, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it just kind of disappeared. So I haven't uh, I wore this in two thousand and one, two thousand and two constantly. Like a like Gucci a Envy. friend, two or three bottles I went through. I've got, I'm going quite big with the spray. You've got to go big. It's Gucci Envy for Oh, I get a cardamom. Oh, a cardamom. Already, the happy memories are coming flooding back. Oh. 
Doesn't that just take you back? Already. I, I, I feel oh. prepared for 12 fights of Snakey B. I got a little drop on my hand there. Now, oh, i tell you what is interesting. Oh, <laughs> it, really, it really takes me back. This ginger and cardboard and... I can't... But why did they discontinue this? I don't know why insane decision that they took to discontinue it. Oh. They've not made anything that even vaguely touches oh, this since. I, I mean, tell you a what beautiful was, oriental fragrance. I tell you what was weird, and I was... Tom Ford is the and, answer. And what I was fully prepared to disagree with. Now, a few years after leaving university, by complete coincidence, as I, as I see it, the first expensive fragrance I bought was Santal by Flores. Um, mm. I didn't buy it. Yeah. My, my wife bought it, it for me. And that was the kind of first, I thought, this is the most expensive thing I've ever been to buy. And, I, and I, now I'm my second bottle of that, and I really enjoy wearing it. Beautiful fragrance. And, and people always drew comparisons between that and Gucci Envy. But I, I had, whenever they, we, we discussed it, I had to be honest and said, I can't remember what Envy smells like. But actually quite That's close. Good, I do get more of a, a more of a kind of gingery vibe to this. Yeah, it's not a million miles away. There's, I mean, there's more spice to this generally. Yeah, it's a bit fresher as well somehow. I think that it's, mm. it's a lot more lively. Oh, it's, it just kind of brings, I just remember, it brings me back to like 80s, 90s. Yeah, oh. and bear in mind as well, this, this is old juice as well. We're, I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure what year we're talking, but we're talking a, a good, cream, significant, long a time. Oh, I feel there's like a sandalwood quality. Yeah, to it totally. The beginning, like, oh. it, get, it gets into that oriental <laughs> mid and heart very quickly. Oh yeah, that is lovely. I think it's so beautiful. Mm. They've not. Why they've they not produced it? anything like that since. Yeah, but, but I'm just, hoping if if Mr. Tom Ford out there has the formula for this stuff, he'll do it as a recreate Tom Ford it. Yeah, blend for like do it really. million dollars. With our, with our worldwide influence as I feel, perfume I feel there's like a, there's a kind of fingery quality to it as well. Yeah, barbershop oriental, yeah. if, there's, if such a thing exists, rather than a barbershop fougere. Oh. It's I'm really beautiful, I'm going to come back to that, because I think there's more to smell. Yeah. But I'm really enjoying it. Right, so the next one is this uh, aforementioned oh. Kuros from 1984. 1984, I mean bloody hell. That, that. How many years old is that with our mathematics? 34, 35. 35 years old? Yeah. 35 year old fragrance being sprayed onto a card here. This is really exciting. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, uh, really, this is so generous of you. I mean, it's already <laughs> it's much more enormous than the current stuff. Whoa. If ever you wanted to know what reformulations Whoa. have done to fragrances. I need to, I think, <clears throat> I think I need to go flesh because. It needs to be on flesh. This, I, mean, I think with a real animalic fragrance as this is, See, that animal needs flesh. An animal needs lots of flesh. I mean, does that not instantly take you to some Ooh. of the hefty <coughs> top end niche stuff that's going on in the current market? Yeah. Today? That's, uh, that smells like a really expensive fragrance. If I said to you, this is the current, this is the current oud, or uh, Oud animatic thing from Arige, you'd say. Yeah, or, or, right? or Roger Duff has just yeah. released this for eight hundred pounds. Oh my god! Whoa, that's so Thunder good. Head. It's so good, isn't it? You it's realize it's hot. It almost it's feels hot. hot. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, feels... there's a there's a big dose of pepper and chili or something in that opening. Yeah, is it close? Uh, there's so much spice. <sighs> it's extraordinary. Like, I set... tell you what. The <laughs> I'm throwing away my current bottle. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't even it, touch it. It absolutely pearls in comparison. This is, this is a great tragedy. You realize what's happening to perfume. Gucci is discontinued, so that's a harder example to draw. But something that's still being made, when you smell those buggers side by side, and I know it's developed in the bottle and it's aged and it's done all sorts of things, but I remember, that's the smell. I remember in the mid 90s wearing this stuff. And that was the smell. And it, you know, it arrested me. Fragrance. That was that was your bog standard. Find it on the high street. Amazing. Find it in boots. Yeah. But what are they making now? This why it's even called YSL, isn't it? No, mm. Nothing original. Um, oh God, that's incredible. But did that smells, make you fall in love with Kuros? But it if smells you weren't already. But it smells so well put together. So yeah. I mean, I mean, I'll be going. Oh my God, it's, it's huge. But it's it's so balanced. And Pierre Bourdon. That's incredible. That guy stuff. that brought you cool water, green yeah. Irish tweed. But it makes you, like, it's hard to imagine a time when that was fa even fashionable because it seems so risky and it, well, bold. 
but it's that it's that wonderful combination of being Oof. in the early 80s where the big the big sort of animalic chest hair well, things of the 70s the were going but the 80s was going in a greener vibe that would eventually go aquatic maybe it's it's, it's from the times of ultra misogyny when it was yeah. <laughs> acceptable to be almost like a caveman in a suit but they they've, they've, they've painted the thing as well as in terms of the advertising as a slightly so, I mean Oh, so beautiful. Extraordinary. Al almost, <laughs> almost a slightly sort of fecal oud note in there as well, which isn't, which isn't mm. in there, but I get a sense of. Amazing, amazing. Right. How's the Gucci? Oh, so I, I get more of a kind of a, a peppery. I get, it is a, it's a little bit spicier than uh, Santal by Forest. Yeah. It's, uh, and I think that, that opening is a lot more energetic. The Santal is, is sort of immediately, but is immediately of elegant. Well. I really get cardinal. Yeah. Freshly Beautiful. cracked black Beautiful. pepper as well. My god. I mean. <laughs> okay. I, I will now go on eBay and I will now buy myself a bottle of vintage Kouros. If you can. If I can get, if I can get a, good, a good price. The Envy as well, but I'm already onto that on another website. But now we have things. Uh, Somehow we have so to challenge got, the air to We have an this. envelope. This is an envelope from Greg, um, which has kind of been crudely taped together. This is the if, answers. I don't know if the, I think it's just the answers, and there are some instructions anyway. But what you can't see is we have ten little samples. We shouldn't open this now, should we? No, we'll open it. We'll open it at the end. So we'll we smell now, them, and then we'll, oh, I've uh, spilled you, all the fragrance samples. I'm really sorry. <laughs> this is so, um, but they're all numbered. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we should point out he's he's actually printed off labels <laughs> like this. And numbered them, Thanks, too close. Um, but which is which is great. Yeah, I because don't know which number that is. One two seven nine eight three four six. Is that ah. the order? Right. So let's get stuck in. This is so exciting. This is sample number one. God. Okay. Are you nervous? I, I am. I'm nervous. nervous. I'm yeah. Big spray. If any of these are Aventus, I'll peppery, my peppery, incensey, freshly kept, cracked pepper. Very freshly cracked pepper. Um, Incense a little bit more in the background, I think, than the pepper. Mm. Rec Recognisable genre. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it is. I think there's frankincense as well. It smells like there may have once have been some aldehydic notes that have faded slightly. Mm. I can think of two things that it brings to mind in combination, neither of which I think it is. But one would be incense Avignon or full incense by Montal. Mm. The other would be black pepper by Comme des Garçons. Yeah, it's something in between. It's those somewhere two. in between those two. It things. doesn't quite have the iso super levels of, of um, Avignon. I don't think. And of course, we're spraying these on on cards, so it's hard to tell. Yeah. We might a couple of them that intrigue us. We might go back onto skin. I think. Yeah. I think, but we may need to come back to this because it's interesting though. A very yeah. nice herbaceous aspect as well coming through. Mm, a little bit, a, a hint of greenness. I mean, I mean, I'm certain. Mm -hmm. I don't know how these are divided up, but I'm certain that's probably a niche offering from a house. I, I would have said line. it's a niche. If that if that were something by Comte de Garçon or that 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 kind of brand, I wouldn't be surprised. So let's let's come back. To let's see. I, that is intriguing though. As well. Yeah, it's starting to come through, isn't it? But. Basically, pepper, like incense, it, cardamom. So that is number one. I should point out at this stage that the thing filling the air at the moment still is curious. Oh my god. Sample number two. Here we go. Let's, let's do it on camera. Lovely little atomizers. It's not the most beautiful noise in the world as well. Completely different. Sorry. Sorry, I was stealing his sample there. Hmm. I just let, let the alcohol settle, but completely different, much kind of sweeter, fruitier kind of. Hmm. That's a that's a very pleasant um fougere-esque style thing with a little bit of that note that I, I've often loved in perfumes. Of gloss paint, mm, there's, the very there's thin, glossy paint, paint yeah. aspect. It's not bitter green though. No, I think it's it's kind of sort of lightly herbaceous. You get a hint of minty something. Yeah, 
it's slightly, slightly minty. I get like a minty white spirit. This feels more designery. Yeah. I would say. We should be writing these down. Shall I, shall I write these down or something? Yeah. I don't have a pen. I'll get, I'll get my phone out. I'll get my phone out. Um, so we are. I'm getting a slightly vintage vibe here as well. So what we said. Uh, slightly vintage vibe. But it's so intriguing, isn't it? We often smell things, and we know what they are ahead of time, and our noses are expecting certain notes, and then you smell stuff blind. Yeah, it really, ca it really causes your brain to go into overdrive. Well. The Kuros is absolutely remarkable and staggering. Mm. Do you get a little bit of that sort of gloss paint thing? A little bit. See, this is now going more fusionary. I'm, I'm, I'm smelling quite a vintage, a vintage mid '90s fusionary style perfume there. Mm. Not sure, not sure quite what the notes yeah. breakdown is going to be on that, but let's come back to some of these because also we are, we're only judging them on first sniff, so we've got to come back. That's number two. Distant cousin to Sheep Palatine as well, actually. Distant cousin. Mm. Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I, is this sort of galbanum-y green? Number three. Quality. This is so exciting. I feel so sorry for all those molecules floating away. Mm. Kind of sweeter, bougier. Are we getting this first smell, like, as the alcohol comes up? Oh, that's interesting. Now this, number two's gone soapy. Yeah, it was heading that way, wasn't it? Now number three is interesting. It's got, it's, it's still got a slightly boozy aspect, it's a like a slightly liqueur, like a slight rum mm. element. A hint of stewed fruit, fruit maybe. Yeah. But definitely a. It smells like something Duchamel could have done. Yeah, slightly creamy, boozy. Kind of yeah, dark stewed fruit. Speaking of free free, cheers. Chin chin. I like that a lot. I'm, get, I'm getting a little hint of licorice. Not the bitterest licorice in the world. But I would say that's a designer though. If I had to yeah, guess. Yeah, do you know, I can't even guess at this stage because. So what? My nose, my nose is, is already here. excited free by the Kuros designer and the um, Gucci. Boozy. Let me smile again. Creamy, fruity. All right then. I'm going to go niche with that. Really? I think I think that's a really interesting stewed fruit two. aspect. Mm. It's gone very soapy, hasn't it? It's gone soapy, but it, there's also there's another green herbaceous aspect to this, and I don't know whether if it's galbanum, but there's something. Oh, I've dropped it, but I've caught it because I'm a speed <laughs> dealer of anything. I'm get, are you not getting that slight relation to Shepra Palatan? I know what you mean. I don't know what it is in Shepra Palatan, but I'm getting... I know, I'm yeah, getting I, know some, I know what you mean by the galbanum, that bitter sweetness. There's a bitter green sweet thing right. going on. But we've got to carry on because we've got lots of pots to get to. This is number... Great fragrances, Greg. Some nice things here. And you're absolutely right. When you, when you have no idea what to expect, your mind is so much more open. Yeah, it's a great challenge actually. It's a great idea. Number four. Here we go. Ooh, got a little waft of that on mm. mine. Oh. A little bit speaking. I think Greg has also chosen things that he th that he knows we're going to find interesting, as well as just mm. mysterious. It's, a, it's almost a little bit oriental. A little bit spicy. Some of it landed just here. Really? Is that it? Yeah. Is that not something else? That's the, that's what's just landed there. That smells very like kind of gingery cardamom-y. Let's go away. Again, again, it is a little bit. Um, it is a little bit herbaceous. 
there's a sweetness underneath. There's a slightly honeyed, there's a slightly honeyed aspect, kind of unifying things. I think in the middle there, but it's hard to tell straight off the off the top. Oh, I quite like this actually. I said quite like it. It's quite sticky. Like, yeah, I get leathery qualities to it as well. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of a sweet leathery. It's a, I think it's, a, like, it's a distant relation to something like Tuscan leather. I'm, ge I'm getting, mm. I'm getting a leathery, suede thing going on. Yeah, that's. But at the same time, something quite fruity in the top, something mm. a, a little bit more, a little bit more sweet. But I, I sense that that might mm. be a bit of a diversion. I'm gonna write sweet, leathery, woody. Very, actually, in that middle, I would imagine that's very dry as well. A little bit of damp concrete. I would say that's niche. Yeah. No, I'm just going to say... I quite like that shape. If that's design, it makes me rethink my whole concept of, um, of the designer versus niche. Structurally, it feels similar to Aventus. I don't think... I'm not going to say it smells like Aventus, not in an Aventus fragrance, but... You know, I'm thinking of Birchy Woody with a kind of fruity booziness. Yeah. I'm starting to get a little hint of cumin as well. The faintest little whisper just, of something. I keep getting <laughs> It's enormous. I'm going to put this hand in my pocket. It's, I mean, it's so enormous. It's really hard to describe. I'm enjoying that. Right. I think that's really good. That okay. slightly cumin aspect is coming through for me at the, at the end there. Num oh. Dan's trying to balance very small samples upright on a jiggly table. I think we're on a slight slope. Number six. No. One, Five. two, three, four. Six. The wine. <laughs> Midway through smelling. Right. So that is number five. This is number five. We haven't we, tried that yet. We've we? not tried this yet. It's a brand new smell. Okay. <laughs> Lovely. Number five. If we have smelled it, we're smelling it again. No, we haven't smelled it because it didn't come out of the atomizer. Good, um, good test actually, isn't it? Yeah. If the atomizer doesn't, doesn't give you any juice, it's because it's mm. it's not up the bung, so to speak. That's very interesting. Yeah. I'm getting those wonderful cherry drops that you get from Treebor. Mm. Oh yeah, God, it's kind of slightly sweet, slightly like. Mm. I need to wait till the alcohol's. Oh, I like that a lot. I'm, ge I'm getting cherry drops, big cherry drops. I'm getting cherry drops, I'm getting a little bit of booziness, I'm getting licorice again. I'm getting... But the cherry thing. I'm getting more of a dark boozy. Mm, more of a dark... It's good, isn't it? I get quite a lot of um, permanent marker as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know what like you mean. Like felt tip yeah. permanent marker. Yeah, definitely a lot of that. Let me try some of that again, sorry. We should point out the sacred music you can hear is the choir rehearsing. It's very beautiful. Oh. Great samples here, Greg. Let's have another myth. I feel like I know this fragrance as well. Do you know what would be really interesting? Any of these that we know already. So Greg, Greg did say on. he tried to pick fragrances with which we were not familiar. So what are we going to say about five? It's getting a little bit dirty now. I'm get, I'm, if you could combine, if you could combine a slightly vintage barbershop with a very fresh dark cherry. But I'm talking about that cherry that you get in in the cherry drops I get that from Tree Ball, which is a, it is a sort of quite. Dark, is there something cherry. kind of vintagey to that as well? There is, there totally is. Cherry, booze. I've not smelt these fragrances, but I... Vintage. I imagine that this is the kind of thing that people might be talking about when they talk about things like Bogart fragrances. Yeah. Uh, what, what are they called? I can't even remember. I've not Bogart Poirot, isn't it? There's Bogart Poirot and there's a few, a few versions of that. Quite like that. It's the kind of thing that I that I would imagine they might be, but That's I've never smelled those. So I've, I've just written down cherry booze vintage. Number Definitely six. vintage. -y. Number six. I love this. We should do this more often. Yeah. It's a good test for our for our schnozzes to see what mm. what we're getting.
Mm. Okay, I'm, I'm getting a lot of this kind of like fougere vibe. I think Greg actually he knows that we're into our into our barbershoppy vintage mm. fougere style. It feels stuff. quite like a light. I think that's quite powerful. Citrusy. From here. Really? I got a big I got a big projection from over there. That feels more citrusy fougere, like citrusy lavendery. Oh, yeah. Quite bracing and quite, quite crisp and sharp. Mm. This has gone, this has gone funky. All right, funky. But the citrus in this is a little bit, is a little bit going into a herbaceous quality again. Mm. I'm just going to give you back number five. Mm, let's try number five. This is much more green and citrusy. I would say number this. five is a, is a cousin of Kuros. Yeah, it's good, quite funky, isn't it? Yeah. This has gone very green. In fact, five is very Kuros-like. Mm. Is the I Kuros mean, on there? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a fist the Sounds like rotten cheese. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you, YSL, green. for being brave enough. I, I'm imagining six six has to be some kind of vintage. But I, is this five in my hand? Yeah. Yeah. I think number five is smelling of is smelling of urinal cakes and vintage vintage kuros in some DNA or other. It's a slightly fresher version That's almost of Kuros. a tautology. I mean... <laughs> yeah. I put, have this back. Oh. This, that's, that's a real... I wouldn't be at all surprised if that's not from the same perfumer as Kuros. If mm. not a flanker of Kuros. I'm getting a slightly fresher version yeah. of Kuros there. Five, yeah, it's got a bit of fill. Fuck. But, uh, I mean, that, but that's also got a kind of... Eight, six is, get, is going into that vibe, but a, a lot cleaner. Mm. But it's got a real citrusy fougere. But there's something there's something sweetening it out slightly. Not uh, not this cherry thing in in mm. that case, but there is this slight hint of a berry. Bearing in mind, if these things are vintage, they may have lost some of the top. Mm. I, but even so, I would be surprised. There's a slightly I would be surprised aspect. if that had come out in the last ten years. Yeah, I can't imagine that that would Number be Number seven. Here we go. What do we have here? Mm, slightly aldehyde, a little bit incensey. Again, I get, I get a slightly, a slightly incensey aldehyde quality. Yeah, that's not a million miles away from number one. In another life, in another life, that's reminding me slightly of Nimitta by Prasanna. A, a more delicate version of it. A very, a, very understated, less el sophisticated. An aldehydic incense. It's quite nice. I mean, I, 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 the, it, it feels, this, this feels, by comparison to the last few, like a, an intelligent, polite fragrance, which leads yeah. me to think this may be a, a, this may be a modern, more modern niche. I would say. Yeah. Smells again like um, like a, a sort of slightly junipery, fruity aspect in there. Yeah. Which brings to mind actually one. I can't remember which one. Which brings to mind one of those things from St Giles, the Bertrand yeah. before that jun that sort of juniper incense. Oh yeah, I'm now getting a hint of gin. Yeah. A little, well, a little bit in there, isn't there? Yeah, it's quite nice. Very pleasant for sure. So what, we're on number seven. More, and I'd say more successful than Juniper Sling by Ben Halligan's, for instance. Gin, what were we saying? Gin, incense. Gin, ginsense. Yeah. Maybe, is there a fragrance called ginsense? There is, is by, I can't remember who it's by, but. That, sure. if, if that's ginsense, I'll eat my hat. Gin, I incense. Thought I, I just thought I thought of that idea for a fragrance <laughs> called ginsense. Fuck. Gin, incense niche. I have to say, I'm excited about the next one because it's the best color. The next one is the darkest of the lot, and I don't know if you can that see can it, mean only one good oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Let's go big. Go big or go home, that's what I always say. 
Yeah, it's more ambery, more leathery. Slightly boozy. Oh, I recognise it. Bad news is the wine. The wine's got a bit cold. Yeah. Shit. It was a good temperature to start with, but we've been outside. Nightmare. Sort of gen gentle amber, some violet. There's something slightly violety about that. I don't know. A little bit. This isn't massively wowing me as quite as the colour. It smells like a fragrance that's faded slightly. Like once upon a time there was more going on and it slightly lost something. It's slightly boozy, slightly ambery. It's quite nice. It doesn't have the stickiness of something like Amber Aurea. So this is number eight. Or the balls of Ambre Fatiche. Of, what uh, was it? Boozy, ambery. Slightly, a, a, a gently sweet amber. No discernible smoke. I'm going to say to boozy, it. ambery, underwhelming. Yeah. Let's carry on for now. Pleasant. Yeah, yeah. Ple pleasant. Perfectly pleasant. Number nine. I love stuff like this. It's like Strike It Lucky or, or Countdown without having to do the hard maths. But without Carol Fordman. So no, th who's the new one? I don't know. Rachel. Oh, that, that's much more. This is punchy, even from here, I'm getting this. It's very, very interesting selection. Like It's great, isn't it? This has gone much more back to the uplifting aromatic. I can't quite, or like it was a kind of alcohol before. But. Aromatic, herbaceous, but with a bit of sweetness in there as well. There's some there's mm. some gentle fruits in the top of that I think. Interesting. And we should point out as well we're not wearing these on skin, so it's yeah. impossible to say anything about really about the middle and the base of how these things develop. But well, we will try them all on skin. Maybe keep you updated. Yeah, this uh, I mean there, there, there seem to have been a kind of a, a few fougere aromatic kind of fragrances. Yeah. So far, this seems like one of the lighter, brighter, more uplifting ones. Yeah. I like that little hint of sweetness though. It's tiny, but it's, it's just there enough, isn't it? The citrus is quite nicely done, I think. Yeah. If I had to say, I think it would fall again into a designer camp. Nicely done. It's so hard to tell, though, isn't it? Especially the further back you go. If you said to me, it's actually getting what's Kuros? I'd say that's the most cutting edge should... niche stuff out there. This is starting to get a little bit sweeter, a little bit rounder. Let's just tweet it. Let's just backtrack a little bit. So, um, let's look at our notes, shall we? So, number. So, number. What are we going to say about number nine? What are we going to say about that? Citrus, Again, fresh aromatic. Citrus, and, aromatic, fougere. Hint of sweetness. Hint of droppability. I get a little bit of like champagne or something. So this is going back to number eight. But I have a vivid imagination. Number eight. Which we said boozy, ambery, underwhelming. Slightly drier than I want in an amber fragrance mm. as well. I want something a little bit it's more not, sticky it's and not syrupy. Sticky sweet. There's no lamp in them, is there? Slightly drier in an amber, yeah. Anyway, let's just It doesn't have all of those big resins to round it out, so it feels let's like just, let's it just feels get like to, one aspect let's of the fragrance. Get to the end. This is number ten, the last one. And I sense number 10 will be the most exciting. I can tell by the sound. Maybe it's like Roger Dove. But half of these are Roger Dove. Can you imagine? I like that. I mean... I like that from here. It's another aromatic. It's interesting, he's, he's got given us a lot of these aromatics. Which is surprising because I've always thought of myself as someone who prefers Orientals. But I think they all they all appeal to that vintage, yeah, vintage Fougere side of us. Mm. And actually, the link between the. the so uh, we were on number ten. So let's just come back to. Uh, <laughs> Let's get back to number 10. So we were interrupted because it was the end of the choir rehearsal. There's a lot of people milling about. We're uh, just trying to do our thing for you on camera. And then I spilled some wine. Dan um, spilled some wine. So I think... 
chaos. It's chaos. I think, I think number ten is another kind of citrusy aromatic. I think there is a kind of junipery. I definitely, f- I yeah, feel, I feel, sweetness. I feel this sweetness. is niche and it doesn't have the vintagey vibe that the others had. Some of these feel really 80s, 90s um, vintage feel, don't they? Right, I'm gonna write Which is n- lovely. I'm going to write down niche for this one because I think this is definitely niche. One thing we do know from, from Dan is that he's divided it up between niche Greg. and designer from Greg. So this is Dan. I'm done. Um, okay. We know that there's a mixture here. So it's very interesting to see which is which. Yeah. And I think our expectations might be might be dashed in a couple of cases. Yeah. But that's great because right. actually so to, we're, let's, we like let's surprises. Let's, them. let's so go back and recap. This is number one. Yeah. We've written down peppery incense cardamom niche. Yeah. I stand by that. Totally agree. I Again, juniper for me. If it was Comme de Garçon, I wouldn't be surprised. No. It's that kind of thing. If that was Comme de Garçon or if that was um, a prototype of juniper sling without the brown sugar leather aspect. Number two, we've written Fougere design in 90s soapy. I would I would actually change that to 80s and say very soapy. 80s, we're going even further back. I think it's very soapy. Really soapy. Mm, I tell you what, if they make, still make this, I want a bottle. <laughs> I really like this. Very I was, soapy though. I, this reminds me of Badidas, that wonderful shower gel <laughs> body stuff. The green bottle is really, it's a slightly sort of faux green earthy forest floor thing. But it's very beautiful in a bath. If you now, number three, we've written, <laughs> I've written boozy, creamy, fruity, shit niche. Shit niche, not shit. Maybe There's niche. a kind of a woodiness as well, I would say. Oh, I see, I don't agree about that being shit. I like that. <laughs> I find that interesting. I find it, I find this... Is this the one I thought was very cherry? No, I think that's later. Dominant. I, I, I get a sort of sweet cherry thing going on there as well. Cherry tobacco. I get cherry tobacco. Yeah. Actually. It wouldn't surprise me to. I now get tobacco. It seems to, I mean, if you said that was something like Odes, um, Ode Sarai by Bertrand du Chauffeur for Naomi Goodseer, I wouldn't mm. be surprised. I that actually, stewed yeah. fruit. That's actually, I, 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 I think. Or think Naxos from yeah. Zerzhov. Boozy I, I stewed fruit. I, I, I do get the smoke. Of, and I think, I think that is definitely niche. Yeah, I think it's niche. Uh, I, it's interesting. One, it's, two, three, it's been done before or four. afterwards, depending on where it came. This is niche, I would say. We've written sweet, leathery... Yeah, sweet, leathery, woody niche. I think I would stand by that. Yeah, do you know, I just I was saying, saying to Dan before... We had, we had a little break off camera here and... I get a slight aspect of like Tuscan leather with a bit of cumin or something going on rather than the raspberry sweetness that you might get. Yeah, I know you... What's the, what's the company? Memo? Yeah, Memo that do yeah. African leather. Yeah, I can imagine if... Irish leather. I can imagine, you know, like African leather. I you can, can get a leather, but with yeah. something you wouldn't relate to it, like tomato leaf plus leather, or I wouldn't be that surprised. Or some if this berry. was some kind of memory kind of thing. But I, I definitely I get. Them. I get I mean, a Tuscan leather plus cumin plus yeah. unspecified. I would say unspecified I mean, sort of that's distraction that's fruit. That's definitely niche. Five. The We've top distraction. Cherry me, booze, vintage, funky. Yes, funky. funky. Uh, I mean, that, I think that has to be vintage. It smells like Kuros. It smells like Kuros, yeah. I wonder if that's just Kuros, a <laughs> yeah. later vintage of Kuros. Or a flanker of Kuros, isn't it? I, I'm going to be bold, I'm going to be bold and I'm going to say I think that's Kuros. Let's go with it then. I don't, I don't, maybe it's not Kuros, I think that's Kuros. If you spray that on me it, in the street, I'd say that's right. Kuros. Six. But who knows? Um, I don't think we'd have two lots of Kuros here, but maybe. We've written citrus, vintage citrus fougere. I think I understand yeah, that. Yeah, totally agree. A little, little bit of something more interesting lurking in the background. We, mm. I think I've, Oops, sorry, I've really dropped that on the floor. <laughs> yeah, we should point out again. We should point out again that... Battery's running low, so we should... We should um, quick. <laughs> we are spraying these on card. On skin, yeah. this might be a different story altogether. Yeah. Seven. Where does that go? Seven, we've said gin, incense, niche. Jish. 
Or Jintens. Jintens. <laughs> Which, if it doesn't exist already, I want to trademark that. Now, eight. Yeah, like that. We've just simply written boozy, ambery, underwhelming. I was kind of sad by that. Yeah, slightly underwhelming, I would say. Slightly, slightly dry and lacking, lacking any of the sweetness that it promises and any of the, the resinous quality. Mm. Might be a different case on skin. I'm getting something slightly sour though, and sort of sour but uninteresting as well. Mm. Slightly turned, but without the funk of number one of those nine. Ones. We've said citrus aromatic. I'm food sure that's kuros. What we've won that one. Hint of sweet. So yeah, I am, it, it, it feels like another kind of vintagey, citrusy, aromatic, and as we said, with a hint of sweet. Yeah, it feels like a mid '90s designer. I would say early '90s, like earlier. And Do you know what that reminds me of a little bit? Something I used to wear back in the day, Dunhill Red. And I can't even quite remember the smell, <laughs> but I remember the feeling. But my last one... And I did, enjoy, I did enjoy Dunhill Red, I remember. My last one, number 10, Citrusy Aromatic Juniper. Again, I think that smells definitely niche. Right, I'm going to open... This oh my is god, the, this is exciting. This is the envelope. Oh. Oh, it's nice though, it's really pleasant. Oh. So, my camera's just about to run out, I hope it doesn't run out. Here are the answers here. If it runs out, we, what can we do? Nothing. It says, hi chaps, really looking forward to seeing the video. Thanks for agreeing to take part. We should have read this beforehand. Yeah, we should have. Um, so there are 10 fragrances, all labelled with a number. I have also enclosed 10 reveal sheets that tells you what each one is and a few snapshots of information. My idea was that you sniff each one blind and give an honest opinion. I don't care if you totally trash them. <laughs> and then We're after we each like one, those. refer to the relevant sheet and let everybody know what the fragrance is. This is, of course, just my idea. But you can do whatever you wish. It's your video. Thanks again, guys. Uh, Greg. P.S. Also, 1984 Kuros and some Envy included for both of you. That's so nice of him. Hugs and kisses, Greg. Doesn't say hugs and kisses. But we, just, we add that because we, we hope that you feel that. Yeah. So anyway, we. we, we oh, well, this is exciting. We okay. Um, so, right. What if, Dan, horror story. What if they're all just different batches of Aventus? I don't know. But we need to, we've got my back, my dramatic light is flashing, so we're going to carry on. How long does that normally give you when it's I, flashing? I don't know, this has never happened before. Shit. Fragrance okay. one, which, so we've said this is Mercedes Benz VIP Club Infinite Spicy. We'd never have got that. No. So this is a designer fragrance, not a niche. Top notes, Szechuan pepper, serenese, coriander, middle notes, ginger, cardamom, juniper berries, base notes, and brox and cashmere wood and teakwood. Would never ever have got that. No? Mercedes Benz, bloody hell. No. Yeah. So it's a designer. I'll tell you what though, they're nice cars. Why wouldn't they make a nice perfume now? So our description was kind of right, but it was a, we thought it was a niche, whereas it's a designer. But is it a designer? Yeah. Is Mercedes a designer, or are they another yeah. another sphere altogether? Number two, we said Fougere, designer 90s soapy. This is a uh, uh, Leonard Porom original, which is actually launched in 1980. Ah! So, uh, by uh, the nose behind it is Ron Vinograd. Can I smell that? Um, top notes, bergamot, lavender, marjoram, petit grain, thyme, and basil. Mid notes, uh, artemisia, carnation, carrot, <sighs> cedar, cinnamon, jasmine, iris, patchouli, vetiver, base, amber, castorium, lavender, leather, opal, and musk. So quite a kind of traditional really like that. 80s fougere. I like that a lot. Number three, we said, um, uh, well initially we said shit niche, but we changed that to niche, boozy, <laughs> creamy, fruity. So this is Adori Tobacco. Ah, I've heard about ah, that brand. So we, d we did say cherry tobacco, didn't we? Yeah. And so this is released in 2008 by Adori, now discontinued. Interesting. An aromatic fragrance for women and men the fragrance features bitter, bitter orange, incense, eucalyptus, jasmine, vetiver, oak, moss, vanilla, and tobacco. To me, this is as authentic as tobacco gets. I, I have to say, I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was decent. So we said, yeah, Adori. We said, need to um, look out for the rest of that range then. Cherry tobacco. But eventually, we didn't get that straight away. It's, um, it took a while, didn't it? But that, it, it came. Number five. Again, we've said cherry booze, vintage, funky. Aha, uh -huh. interesting. Roger Parfums, De La Nuit number three. 
Yeah. Random. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. The freshness of bergamot, Ameris, and Artemisia counterpoints a note of cool rose in the heart of this creation. A lively blend of cardamom, cumin, and saffron is worn by cedar, sandal, gaiac, and juniper woods, made earthy by cypro, gurjam, and patchouli, and underscored by a rich base of incense, starax, benzoin, amber, cistus, leather like labdum, and leathery notes. Gone. Did we enjoy that? I seem to remember. See, this is the one. Okay. You, this is the one you thought was leather was um, kuros. Was it? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. No, that's this one here. Is it? Oh yeah, yeah. No, this is it. That was the sweet leather. Okay, this is the cherry booze vintage funky. Is this the one I thought was kuros? Yeah. This is Jules Mad Amor de Palazzo. That's number that. five. God. Yeah. Top notes, pepper cloves, ginger nutmeg, heart notes, absolute violet, atlas cedarwood, leather, Indonesian patchouli, lapidum, base notes, musk, oud, amber, papyrus, animal, castorium. Which one? Oh, that's not the Kuros one. Five. I think I'm, I think I'm going to remind myself because maybe it was five. Yeah. One of these buggers smell like Kuros. Anyway, <laughs> it was very nice. Whatever. Six. We have said vintage citrus fougere. This is Marc de Modernier, Genghis Khan designer ah. from 1989. Favourite fragrance of the legendary no, poster Hednik uh, from Base Notes. Oriental Woody for Men, launched in 1989. Top notes bergamot, lemon, cloves, nutmeg, lavender, mint, juniper, thyme, pepper. Middle notes are rose, jasmine, lily, the valley. Base notes vetiver, uh, benzo, patchouli, olibanum, and pine mm. needles. We Interesting are selection here. On to number seven, which this is the one we said gin sense, gin incense, gin incense niche. Which we lied on. Ah, okay, it's not. Ah. Bottega uh, Veneta Borom, which is a designer, a well known designer. Yeah, they've had some yeah, good following, haven't they? Which I've not tried. Um, we should try this. Absolutely. Top notes Calabrian bergamot, pine from Siberia, genome from Balkans. Spicy notes of Jamaican pepper warmed with Canadian fur, Mediterranean clary sage, base, Andalusian lanternum, leather, and Indonesian patchouli. Uh, next. Oh, take my favourite one. Number eight, we said boozy and ambery underwhelming. Yeah, what this was this? This is gold filled and banks. Ah. Uh, is that the Australian one? Yeah. We the tried them before, didn't we? And were they underwhelmed? Completely underwhelmed by them, yeah. In Fortnum and Mason, I think it was, in fact. Unisex Oriental Wood, yeah. Uh, released in 2016, resinous and comforting leathery fragrance, supposed to represent an exceptional counter between a rainbow of woods and spectacular Austrian desert under the burning wood. Features uh, pa uh, palisander rosewood, Sicilian mandarin, cardamom, benzoin, vanilla, and. He just put and, so it could be anything. I think, I think we were pretty accurate on that. Um, well, they do that Pacific moss and, yeah. and bullshit. Which actually just yeah. didn't... Well, okay. most of these I've really enjoyed. And that one I thought I could take or leave. I Number nine, we've said citrus aromatic fougere. A bit sweet. And it is... Oh, okay. Victor and Rolf antidote. I knew I knew this bloody smell. That's the only one of this entire list yeah. that I have smelled before. Okay, yeah. Uh, I like it. People, yeah, people have raved about that. I so, like yeah. it, yeah. It discontinued. Not that far from Envy, actually. Not a million miles. I know, I know Greggy Boy is a, good, is a big fan of Antidote. I've seen that on videos. And I smelt it once upon a time in the House of Fraser in Westfield when it was still mm. around. Number 10. Luca Turin is not a fan. Number 10. We said but citrusy, aromatic, juniper niche. What do we have? It is Suskian Black Influence niche. French Indie House, fragrances all produced in grass. I was alerted to this one by Nigel from YouTube channel Two Cents Worth. He has a very cinematic video review. Nutmeg, cardamom, vanilla, Laurentian, benzoin, vetiver, tonka bean, cedarwood. Very pleasant. Yeah, it is classy. So I think, all in all, I'm, I'm reasonably pleased. I think we were kind of reasonably accurate. We were mostly there. I think what it says to me is that your nose never quite knows what it's getting in the middle and the and the base. So you should always wear things on skin. But a so great selection. I mean, a really So this is Roger Duff, which is 160 times more expensive than anything else. Bonkers. <laughs> totally bonkers. <laughs> so that's okay with that one. Um, and anyway. there are some designers here which are probably great value. Absolutely. 
but and giving some interesting stuff. I think out of these twelve fragrances, if we had to choose a winner, I mean for me it's Kuros. I mean it's absolutely all the way. This is an extraordinary experience. So thank you um, so much, Greg. Uh, yeah, uh, you're a legend. It's, you're been, a it's been really, really uh, fascinating and lots of fragrances we haven't tried before. Amazing to revisit these ones. And I'll be looking um, online to buy some of these. Things. We'll give you a link down here to uh, his website, fragrancesamplesuk.com. Yeah, try that um, out. Just in the interest interest of balance, uh, because. Um, we are not influencers and we don't do collaborations. Um, we will put some other links to other sample uh, sites down below. Um, people who yeah, haven't asked there to get in touch because there. there are lots of other good people. Um, so and you're free to try any of those. But once more, thank you very yeah. much to Greg. We I mean we love Greg, don't we? He's like we said at the beginning. He's yeah, got us into exactly. he's got us into this YouTube we are thing and a big fan. We really love we love your work so much um, and thank you for the generosity. And. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy sniffing. Bye. Okay. okay. Honestly, on paper it's nice, but on your skin it'll be like, oh my god, I've just gone back to 1998. Does that look central? I can't. I can't see the thing. Well, let's swap seats. I'll. I'll sit where you are. No, but then, then you can't go on that side. Huh? No, I just mean for seeing. Oh, for, to look for seeing. I'll sit where you are, but bearing in mind my weight, mm. I'll sit about 20 centimetres to the left. <laughs> no, but it's not, it, it's not. That's the problem with having like a thing, she's there. A th that you mean the background? Yeah, because it, like, it needs to be like completely central. I'm going to get rid of this. And now I'm going to completely fuck the whole thing up, watch. I mean, I completely fuck the fuck, oh for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> right. In any other universe, this would be so surreal, wouldn't it? <laughs> Two blokes in the courtyard of a church with a bottle of wine, <laughs> fiddling with a tripod and some smelly juice from 1988. In fact, it wasn't even 88, he said it was earlier than that. Right, fuck it, let's go with it. Do you want to check in the view cam in case it's gone completely yeah, wrong? Go, go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. Can I leave it there? <laughs> yeah, it'll just dry in, don't worry. Yeah. This table lives outside. They get shot on approximately every three minutes by pigeons. Okay. Uh, sorry, guys. Some people walked in and I spilled some wine. But, but Other than that, it's all we're, good. We're carrying on. It's really brave. So, let's finish looking at number, number 10. 10 before we recap. Or numero dix in French. <sighs> mm. See, this is quite similar to the others. That I do feel it's got that kind of it's a citrusy aromatic. I, yeah. I, I feel that is niche though. There's still that little hint of sweetness that I'm getting. I'm, I maybe feel my nice nose is in a sweet well. place. Yeah. And down. actually, just while we were having a little break there, we went back and smelt a few, and I have to say, number one as well, I found a slight juniper aspect. So my nose might be confusing juniper yeah. with something else, I'm not sure. But this is the interesting thing to find out and to get right. some ideas. So let's recap. So, number one, we've said pepper, incense, cardamom, niche. Joseph, do you want me to lock up? Uh, it's not all right, thank you, and then we'll lock up when we're gone. Uh, so, 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 so do you want to arm it? If you, if you lock up everything, uh, including the alarm there, and then I'll, we'll just leave through that door. Uh, okay, fine. Is so, that all right? Uh, so, do you want to lock this as well? Is that all right? Yes, I'll lock this. Thanks, Nick. No thank you very much. Note to self, delete yeah. this. Yeah. All right, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, so let's